Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, and we're going to be discussing the Stablecoin Supply Ratio Oscillator. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. We can first start with the Stablecoin Supply Ratio. Now, this is essentially just equal to Bitcoin's market cap, divided by the stablecoin market cap, and it can equivalently be interpreted as the ratio of Bitcoin supply and the stablecoin supply denoted in Bitcoin. The reason why we're interested in, in stablecoins is because it gives us an idea, essentially, of, of sort of the, 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 the buying power that those stablecoins could have to theoretically purchase Bitcoin. Now, of course, with the sort of the, the, the spot ETFs, Perhaps it makes this metric not quite as useful. Be that as it may, it's still just another metric that we can track and, and see, you know, how it's generally moving. So what we're first going to do is you're going to look at the stable. We're looking at the stable coin supply ratio. It's the orange line. You, or oh, this like uh, this orange line right here. Sort of orange, just red. And I mean, you can see, generally speaking, that it was essentially moving down from 2019 all the way until December of 2022. And then it started to increase starting at the end of 2022. And again, when the SSR is low or decreasing, it means that the buying power for Bitcoin is higher because there's stable coins that can buy a relatively bigger portion of Bitcoin. Obviously, if it's high or increasing, it means the stable coins have weaker buying power. So as, the, as this line goes up, it would theoretically mean that the stable coins have weaker buying power. Down here, they have stronger buying power. We can then add in the, the, um, the, the Bollinger Bands for the stable coin supply ratio, and you get something that looks like this. And you can see how it will go sort of to the top part of that trend line and sort of ride that the, the Bollinger Bands all the way up. Now, though, it's actually getting somewhat close to the middle of it. But what I'm most interested in, and what we've talked about a lot in this, maybe not a lot, but maybe every few months or so, is the, is the stablecoin supply ratio oscillator. So the reason why this one is interesting is because it, when the oscillator is plus or minus two, it's hitting that upper part of the Bollinger Band, okay? So if you take a look at it right here, when it was above two, it was above the Bollinger Band. If it's below minus two, then it's below the Bollinger Band. Now, you can see that the last time it was minus two was all the way back in 2022, right? If you go look at 2022, the last time was actually in June of 2022. We didn't even go below it later on that year. So what's interesting, though, is if you go look at the oscillator, you can see that it, it actually went to some pretty high levels back in early 2023. Very similar levels, in fact, to where it went in early 2021 and then again in 2019. And it then came all the way back down, all the way back down here, and one of the reasons we track this is because you can see that there's a low level, a sort of a limit to, to the downside where it tends to find support, right? So when it comes down to the low end of like minus 2.2 or something, it tends to correspond to, to lows for Bitcoin, right? You can see here's one in late 2018. Here's another one in 2020. You even have one in 2021. It wasn't the low, but it was pretty close. It was after a pretty big drop. And then here you have one in June of 2022, which was pretty close to the actual low, um, but not quite. But again, it, was, it's, it gets you in the, in the ballpark. And so this is one of those things where it might be interesting to track to see if it actually, you know, whenever it does go back down there, it could be an interesting time in the market. Now, what's interesting here is that this first move up by the SSRO looks somewhat similar to 2019 in terms of the, the, the height, the, sort of the level that it went to. But then the second move we saw by it looked more similar to what we saw in 2021, 
But like 2021, just because it spiked to that level didn't mean that the high for Bitcoin had already occurred. We did see Bitcoin go higher even after this high occurred, right? So this high over here with the SSRO actually occurred in late October. But we know Bitcoin rallied all the way until March, at least so far this year. And that was actually a lower high on the SSRO. Very similar thing in 2021, right? It hit a high in January, but then the actual high that occurred in April was, you know, essentially a, a lower high. And so, you know, right now it's all the way back down to negative 0.116. So it is starting to get into some, some lower territory here. And so I think it might be useful to watch where this goes to see if it comes back down to where it was back in, you know, August of 2023. We talked a lot about the idea of a summer lull, basically just a time where the market cools off for a while. And if it plays out at all like 2023, then we could certainly see the SSRL coming back in to sort of that negative 0.4, negative 0.5 level. It's not even that far away. It's already at negative 0.2. But if it does go below that, then this sort of this bound over here would probably be the next main area of interest. So again, it's just another metric to identify price action with Bitcoin. This is the stable coin supply ratio oscillator. We're going to keep the video relatively short. I just wanted to give you guys uh, an idea of, of, of what it is and, and what it's doing right now. Again, we've only talked about this metric maybe a couple of times in the past, but I keep an eye on it. And, and one of the reasons why I like to keep an eye on it is because you know, the, the, the market cap of stable coins, um, you know, I, I do track that some. And, and one of the reasons we track that is because of, of sort of their relationship with altcoins and, and of course, you know, the overall market capitalization of, of various cryptocurrencies or, and the, the market share of various cryptocurrencies is obviously dependent on the market cap of, of stable coins. So stable coins, I think, are an important aspect of the cryptoverse. And so... Occasionally, we'll do just a video looking at stable coins and looking specifically at the stable coin supply ratio oscillator. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and again, check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.